Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two individuals from Neolithic Azerbaijan. Uh, there's going to be a third individual which you will be able to download from the link in the description or maybe not, maybe. But you will find the third individual uh, also from this kind of time period, from this era, uh, from this region. You will find his or her, I don't remember the gender, you will, you will find its genome on my Google Drive folder. Let's begin with these Neolithic individuals from Azerbaijan. So this is our first woman, MTT001. She's got brown color eyes, snub-shaped nose and brown hair. Uh, with my eye shape predictor tool, my eye shape predictor tool is giving her a South Asian eye shape prediction. And for my hair shape predictor tool, it's giving her a prediction for wavy hair texture. Uh, she's got two rare blonde variants and one TPCN2 variation, but it's not a particularly important variation when it comes to prediction of hair color. As you can see, her likelihood of having blonde hair is still 0.12%, so that didn't contribute all that much, but I just found it was interesting and I figured it would be fun to include in the video. She does not have BH1, but somehow she's heterozygous for BH2. You know what that means? BH2 is the main variation that's the most important variation for uh, eye color and hair color and even even extremely important for skin color as well so it's pretty interesting that she has heterozygous genotype for BH2 uh, it means that somewhere in her lineage there was an ancestor who had two derived variants in BH2 and it means she does carry the mutation for uh, the typical mutation for blue eyes despite I will remind you not having any European hunter-gatherer admixture uh, in her DNA now we're moving on to the second woman. She's also heterozygous for BH1 and BH2, and she doesn't have BH3 or BH4. Uh, so we know, just from if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that BH2 is present outside of European hunter gatherers. It's not just uh, it didn't arise as some people, as some people online will claim, 10,000 years ago around the Black Sea, and European hunter gatherers are the ones who had BH2 and they spread it to everybody. No, it was present in the Caucasus hunter gatherers. It was present in, I think, Sansrublia from Caucasus hunter gatherer cluster, and it was present in even Pakistan. In it was present in one of the Shahr e Sahta genomes from Pakistan. It, it's it's around. It's it's been around, right? Um, so. Her having BH2 and the previous individual having BH2 is not a matter of them having some European hunter-gatherer admixture. They probably got it from Caucasus hunter-gatherer or even the Rania Neolithic farmer. This, this mutation has been around in this population for a long time, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, she doesn't have any derived variants in MC1R and with snipper free she's actually predicted to have white or intermediate color skin, kind of equal chances for white and intermediate skin. Uh, my my Nashakot is predicting her to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and black hair. And my eye shape predictor tool is predicting her to have, uh, let's look at that, actually Estonian eye shape. So once again, uh, Caucasoid or West Eurasian facial traits. And for my hair shape predictor tool, my hair shape predictor tool is actually giving her a prediction for curly hair texture. Let's move on to the GD match results of our first individual, which is MTT001. Uh, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Um, as you can see, she's scoring quite a lot of West Mediterranean and East Mediterranean components. She's got a lot of Anatolian Neolithic farmer admixture. That's what we can determine from her scores here. Uh, she does score a little bit of Red Sea, so there is a little bit of like Natufian or Southern Middle Eastern admixture here, but it's not the majority component. She's closest to Armenians actually with the Oracle, and I will remind you this is an individual from Azerbaijan, so we can say that Chalcolithic Azerbaijan inhabitants uh, resembled Armenians. We can say this confidently by looking at this result here. Uh, this is what she scores with the MDL PK11. Uh, she's not scoring any European hunter-gatherer components. As I said previously, uh, she wouldn't score any. She doesn't have European hunter-gatherer admixture. She does score 27.8% uh, Caucasus admixture and EHG here is not European hunter-gatherer. EHG in this calculator is referring to Caucasus, Caucasus specific drift. So she's got a lot of Caucasus specific drift and uh, with the oracle, we can see she's closest to Armenia Chalcolithic, uh, and she is a Chalcolithic individual from Azerbaijan, so not too far off. She's getting modeled as a mixture of Iranian Chalcolithic plus various European farmers, so relative to the Iranian Chalcolithic individuals, she has a shift towards Anatolian Neolithic and European Neolithic farmers. This is what she scores with PanDNA LK12. Uh, what's interesting about the score, she does score... 3% European hunter-gatherer admixture. Uh, where could this come from? Could this come from some kind of affinity that was that was present in Caucasus or 
um, you know, some kind of Cocos hunter gatherers, it could be it could be from there because Bmax scores like five percent uh, European hunter gatherer with this calculator, and this is what she scores with MDLPK16. There is nine percent step here, which is a crazy number. Uh, but I've learned that with this calculator, sometimes people from Western Asia score too much step. They score more step than they actually have. So maybe don't take it too seriously with the Oracle closest to, once again, Armenians. Of course, Armenians are going to be the closest uh, population to both of these groups, both of these individuals. And with the Oracle getting more as a mixture of Armenian plus Sardinian from Europe. Uh, now, this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, as you can see, she doesn't have that much European hunter-gatherer admixture in here. Um, Western European hunter-gatherer does not actually represent European hunter-gatherers. It's just representing some kind of a modern European drift. So she doesn't have all that much modern European drift. And with the Oracle actually getting modeled as a mixture of Assyrian plus Lebanese, what can we see here? Druzia plus Iranian Chalcolithic or Druzia plus Iranian Neolithic were some of the uh, components we saw in the Oracle. But... It's already way past that. Now let's talk about Gidrosia K3. This is her Gidrosia K3 result. As you can see, overwhelmingly West Eurasian, very white. Now let's move on to the second individual, which is POT002. This is what she scores with the Eurogenes K13. Um, as you can see, POT002 is more West Asian and more uh, South Asian than the previous individual. She's not scoring any North Atlantic. She's scoring less West Mediterranean and... Uh, I think about as much East Mediterranean as the previous individual is scoring. So she's a little bit more West Asian in terms of ancestry and she's closest to once again Armenians with the Oracle. Uh, this is a recurrent pattern of these individuals scoring closest to Armenians with any calculator that features Armenians uh, as a part of its Oracle. Uh, this is what she scores with MDLPK11 Modern. As you can see, um, she's got no European hunter-gatherer admixture. Uh, there is 30.6% Caucasus admixture, so there is once again, well, Caucasus is actually even higher. You gotta add the EHG plus the Iran Mesolithic, so like 40% Caucasus admixture here. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of 75% uh, Iran Chalcolithic plus 25% Greek Neolithic, which is kind of um, close to what she is in terms of her actual ancestry. This is what she scores with Pan DNA LK12 Modern. Uh, as you can see, a lot of Caucasus Hunter Gatherer and Anatolian Neolithic admixture, and Caucasus Hunter Gatherer here is also absorbing the Iranian Neolithic admixture that this individual has, and most of her West Asian admixture is actually Iranian Neolithic and not Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, uh, with the Oracle closest to Assyrians here, but that's because the Oracle doesn't have uh, Armenians with Pandiana LK12, and this is what she scores with MDLPK16. A very similar result to what we've seen previously, maybe a little bit higher Caucasian, what else? Slightly higher Indian, so here you see 6.8% Indian, and with the Oracle once again closest to Armenians. It's all various Armenian groups followed by Assyrians, which are also kind of similar to Armenians in terms of autosomal DNA. So you see these individuals who lived in uh, Azerbaijan and the Chalcolithic, they resembled Armenians quite um, quite significantly. Now, this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, and here, kind of similar result to the previous individual. What, what else? What do I see here? What's in that's interesting. I don't see any East Asian, and I see 1.5% Sub-Saharan. That ki that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, so, all these ancient individuals, they tend to score a little bit of Sub-Saharan African, modern. People don't really score that this component all that much. And with the Oracle, she's getting more of a mixture of 75% Iranian late Neolithic plus 25% Anatolian Neolithic, which is kind of what she is in terms of ancestry. Uh, that's kind of the groups that comprise comprise these individuals in like uh, late Neolithic Azerbaijan. It's a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic and Iranian Neolithic farmers. Now we'll be taking a look at their traits with my trait predictor tool, with my genome analyzer tool, which uh, you can find the link to on my GitHub. Let's choose the file. Let's choose. Well, you see, there's three files that I want to make this video on. I want to make this video on this one, on this one, and I also wanted to include I ALX002. But the thing is, ALX002 is very small. It's only six megabytes, and I don't think it's worth the time. So you will find this file on my Google Drive folder. Just open my Google Drive, fo drive folder and look for it. You will find it there. Uh, however, it's not going to be a part of this video. So let's start with MTT001, which is our first individual. Uh, we're going to name it MTT. Right, and she's got GG in Komtsva Met variation, which means a Wari or genotype, and TT in MAOA, which means actually Warrior genotype. So she's got Warrior in, in Komt and Warrior 
in MAOA. Uh, she's got one derived no gold on variant and zero two preference in proveration. So just kind of intermediate level of, uh, levels of dopamine in the brain, intermediate uh, availability of dopamine due to receptors. Oh, she's got AG in TAC1. This is interesting. Most humans have GG here, but she's got one A allele, she's got one A, one allele, which leads to like a 20% or a 40% decrease in the availability of dopamine due to receptors. It's pretty significant. Like uh, having this genotype is basically like in terms of what it feels like, you can simulate having this genotype by taking Zyprexa for a couple months. <laughs> it would be pretty unpleasant. So I, uh, I'm glad I don't have the, well, I, I'm glad I don't have the A allele here in TAC1, but she's unlucky enough, she's unfortunate to, enough to have AG here, uh, which means a lot less dopamine due to receptors and increased likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, various other traits. Uh, what about 5-HTTLPR? She's got TT here which means it does not have long form 5-HTLPR, she's got short form 5-HTLPR, just like most of you guys, uh, and she's got slightly higher odds of depression because of it. What about lactose persistence? Does not carry European lactose persistence, OXTR, GG here, which means two variants for higher levels of empathy. This is the important variation that I look for. So she's got higher levels of empathy based on her genotype in OXTR. For diabetes, she's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type one diabetes. Does not have type one diabetes. And for myopia, AG here, interesting, right? So she's got the GLE on this variation, and the G variant leads to a lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight. Most people have AA here. Uh, most people have a slightly higher odds of myopia, but she's got the G allele, which protects against myopia. Really cool. This is one of the import important uh, variations when it comes to eye color. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, eyesight. For miscellaneous section, I what? Wait, what? Whoa, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what a second, wait a second, what? That surprised me, what? So she's got heterozygous genotype here and she carries micro P mutation. Interesting. That's fast. That's fascinating, guys. So she carries micro P mutation. Well, it's not that bad because she's a woman, right? And it's not a factor for her, but you know. <laughs> okay, Um. now let's, let's get on to um, polygenic risk scores. So you see at the bottom of the page, you will find this polygenic risk scores. For polygenic risk scores, she's got a uh, significantly, like one third the odds for schizophrenia that was typical for Northern Europeans and for Africans as well. So she's got, definitely this doesn't have schizophrenia, average odds for diabetes, and she's not genotyped for anything related to Alzheimer's. So for Alzheimer's, she's not getting any scores for that. Okay. Uh, now that we've seen that, let's start with the other individual. Let's start with the second woman. And by the way, you do have to reset the scores after every 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 time after you do this, you gotta reset the scores. Uh, pot 002, analyze genome. We're gonna name it pot. Pot. Okay, so pot has got AG and comets valmet variation, so intermediate lo dopamine levels. GG and MAOAs. Um, RS6323. So this leads to higher MAOA enzyme activity. This is the warrior gene in, in MAOA. So she's got warrior gene in MAOA and intermediate genotype in Compt. Like overall, in terms of her phenotype, she's probably a little bit more warrior than warrior. Uh, does not have any no go learner variants in DRD2 sprofinance in pro variation. And not genotype for TAC1. Okay, so we can't really bully her for having a. A allele in TAC1 because she's not genotyped for TAC1 at all. Okay, what about... Um, yeah, nothing interesting here. Lactose persistence does not carry this, does not carry European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, she's got CC here, which is associated with higher OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy. We're gonna have to go with this one because the important variation that was on the top is not determined. She's not... she doesn't have that in the file. For diabetes, she's got CC here, which leads to a sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Okay, for hemochromatosis, uh, not a carrier of the hemochromatosis mutation. For Alzheimer's, no APOE2 alleles. Um, so it doesn't carry increased risk of Alzheimer's alleles. For myopia, once again, she's got AG here, which leads to lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight. So this is the second time we see this. This might have been a common mutation. This might have been a common genotype for uh, for these people, for these Azerbaijan late Neolithic people. Interesting, and she does not have the micro P, uh, micro P mutation. Interesting here. 
Okay, so now let's go polygenic risk scores. So polygenic risk scores, she's got very low risk for schizophrenia. Once again, low risk for schizophrenia. Uh, above average risks for diabetes and below average risks for Alzheimer's. I think we have time to do the third individual too. Um, yes, we have time. So let's do the third individual as well. ALX002. Uh, if I don't include the link to that genome in the description of the video, um, you know, write me a comment, remind me to do it. Okay, so we're going to enter ALX here. Uh, ALX got two derived no gold learner variants in DRD2 prophylaxis in pro, so significantly lower uh, number of dopamine D2 receptor sites, much less likelihood of schizophrenia. Um, Interesting. TT here, which means short form 5 HTT LPR, once again, does not have a decrease in the risk of depression, so more risk of depression. Uh, lactose persistence does not carry European lactose persistence mutation for the empathy gene. Uh, two variants for higher levels of empathy in this variation. It seems that none of them are sociopaths. Um, I've been looking at their genomes. No, none of the three are sociopathic at all. For myopia, AA here, and no micro P. Okay, so She's avoided, she's dodged the bullet. Dodged the bullet here. It seems that micro P is only the first individual that I looked at. Uh, now, let's look at polygenic risk scores. Okay, so for schizophrenia, she's got like six times less, like one sixth of the average odds of schizophrenia for Northern European. So, definitely doesn't have schizophrenia. For type 2 diabetes, she's got um, much higher odds of diabetes than was typical for the average person. I don't think it's European. I think I used the Europeans as the reference for this score too. And for Alzheimer's, she's got a also higher odds of Alzheimer's than what's typical for the average person. Why is that? Wait, why is that? I think, oh, I know why. It's because of this. It's because of the genotype right here. So, okay, so she's got, um, she's got higher odds of Alzheimer's than what's typical for the average person. Higher odds of diabetes and much lower odds of schizophrenia than was typical for the average individual. Well, that's all there is to it. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, thanks for watching me until the end. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Uh, I will remind you, you can download the links to download all of these files in 23andMe format are going to be in the description of the video. Uh, leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.